We've taken a look at soccer, football injuries. You requested basketball, so we're about to do it. Huge thanks to Arrow for sponsoring this video. Let's get started. Be whoop. They got to stop on that. Kobe. Point, and they get back to back stops and Ryan again going away. Oh Ball no, down. he's Achilles. What happens is the calf muscle starts riding high because it's no longer attached to your calcaneus bone. And this actually is something similar happened to Aaron Rodgers not too long ago. And I commented on that for TMZ Sports. You see it. Like if you zoom in on the calf when it happens, you see the Achilles tendon pop. It's one of the strongest tendons in the body. And because of that, when it pops, there's a lot of ricochet on the gastroc or calf muscle. And I always find it interesting in basketball when they say, oh, we need to make sure with an MRI that it is in fact a tear. That's one of those things through a physical exam, it's very clear whether or not to tear or not. Like if you see the calf muscle sitting at the top of your leg as opposed to in the middle, you know that there's a tear. You don't need the MRI to make that announcement. You could say there's a tear, but we're gonna gauge severity with the MRI, but they, for some reason, like to keep it a secret. What was actually interesting about that Kobe Bryant injury is after that happened, he returned back to shoot his free throws for that. Really impressive, gotta give it to him, the toughness. 91, 66, Oklahoma City. Oh, oh! I get worried right away with the Kobe Bryant Achilles tendon rupture situation here, but let's see. Robertson ruptured his patellar tendon in his left knee January 2018 while elevating to catch a lob on the backdoor cut. He was progressing toward a return six weeks later, but then had another setback, suffering an avulsion fracture in his knee after coming down from a jump. Rupturing a patellar tendon for a basketball player is really rough. Frequently, a uh, basketball player will suffer from patellar tendonitis, also known as jumper's knee. Because remember, every time you're making a powerful jump up, that power is coming, yes, from the glutes, but mostly from the quads. And the way that the quad is attached to the lower bone of your body is through the patellar tendon. And that's where you're generating that torque in order to be able to explode upwards. And the fact that he had an avulsion fracture is really scary. Avulsion fracture means literally it was bone ripped off the bone. Ouch. Golden State still looking at Green the passes it. Right oh, oh! Did he snap the ulnar in radius? Oh no, this is gonna be so painful to watch. And he clubbed him on the side of the head. And the awkward landing at the end. Oh, I think it's broken. Himself. MRI and Warriors guard Gary Payton II showed slight ligament damage along with his fractured left elbow. When you're falling and you're hyper extending your elbow, so remember, this is flexion of the elbow, this is extension. It's not supposed to go past 180. Once the body force is forcing it to go past this degree, you're gonna get damage, either ligamentous or bony. And in this case, it's both. That means a, a serious recovery, but very very recoverable because both of those things heal. Chris Paul is going to miss Ooh. approximately the next two months. Jam finger? Because of a fractured right thumb. Oh my God. Look, I play basketball all the time and I don't understand how pro basketball players do not break every single one of their fingers and jam every single one of their fingers every single day. If I play more than two times a week, I'm guaranteed jamming a finger because you're constantly trying to go for a steal, a pass, you're catching the ball, you're tired, you're not as aware of your hand movements. So I don't know how they don't hurt themselves more often. The results of CP3's recent MRI revealed a right thumb avulsion fracture that will be evaluated in six to eight weeks. Paul returned to help lead the Suns to the playoffs. Now avulsion fracture, as we said earlier, is when bone is actually ripped out of bone. So basically you have a very strong ligament that attaches to the bone, it pulls on it and actually takes a piece of bone with it. Derek Rose stays getting hit going to the basket. Oh, what happened, what happened? Grabs the knee. Rose came down bad on his left foot. See him holding onto his knee. Left knee. Holding onto his knee and down. Derek Rose suffered a torn ACL in his left knee and will miss the rest of the season. When he tried to return in 2013, 2014, he tore his meniscus in his other knee. He returned once again the following season, but knee injuries continue to impact his availability and his production. It's not uncommon that when rehabbing one part of the body that you get an injury in another part of the body. As you're trying to be protective of the previously injured body part, your biomechanics and your body mechanics change ever so slightly, putting on a different layer of force on the opposite side of the body. So frequently, if a patient will present with neck pain, as an example, I'll find that their real issue starts from their shoulder because they have a rotator cuff issue. Therefore, they're not able to fully move and utilize their shoulder. So as a result, they're using their trap to raise up their shoulder and their 
your arm, thereby wearing that trap down, making it very spasm. And as a result, that area is very tight, causes a lot of pain, but treatment needs to be focused on the underlying problem, not just where the symptoms are. Very tricky with the body like that. Look, these are some serious injuries, but another big issue is playing basketball when dehydrated. Muscles and connective tissues need hydration and circulation to function effectively. When you sweat profusely and do not rehydrate, you set your body up for failure. Even to function optimally at your desk, you need to be properly hydrated. And I find that making the process fun and tasty is the way to go. However, the last thing most of us need is a ton of added sugar in our fluids. That's why I've become such a big fan of Aera. An Aera bottle turns regular water into a delicious drink thanks to their scent pods, which release a scent adding flavor to your water by tricking your brain, all without any sugar, calories, or additive junk. Personally, I love and recommend the watermelon flavor, so visit the link in my description and use code Dr. Mike to get 15% off your order. All right, let's get back to the injuries. During this game, I think Steve gets busted in his nose. Oh, did Derek Fisher hit him in the, with the forehead? And Steve goes, looks at me, walks up to me, and is like, hey, Jenny, like, what's it look like? And I was like, oh, and he just goes, crunch. Oh, crunch don't do that. And just like basically puts it back into place. That's brutal that he full on broke his nose and then repositioned it himself. He's like a UFC fighter in there. But no, uh, I don't recommend anyone do that on their own. Let doctors do it because there's also the danger of forming something known as a septal hematoma. That could be really problematic if you let it build up over the course of a game. So uh, yeah, seek medical care in those instances. Don't want to allow him to get it going off of your mistakes defensively. Oh, oh my God. Hard. He fell on his head, his shoulder blade, the back. It's not just the impact of the fall, Curry said. My whole right side took the brunt of the force in my head. It's basically like a bruise all the way up and down your body that you've just got to deal with. Well, he's very lucky that it's just a bruise and nothing more because that could have easily been multiple broken ribs, which makes it very difficult to breathe while being pain-free. Potentially elbow issues. Very, very lucky in that scenario. The 20th pick in the 2014 draft. Jordan Bell to so McCall to land in. Oh! Took a tough fall again. Did he fall on his coccyx? He did this a few games ago, the same spot. He was taken to UC Davis Medical Center where he spent the night and underwent tests that determined he had suffered with a team is calling a lumbar spinal contusion. Anytime you're falling that hard on the vertebrae, you're potentially uh, risking a vertebral fracture. Compression fractures are notoriously long lasting when it comes to the pain. And sometimes even opioid medications don't help. And we sometimes even go to a medication called calcitonin, which comes in the form of a nasal spray to control some of the pain related to compression fractures. Love his energy on both ends of the floor. Is that Rondo? On Arenas. Oh, is he? On Arenas and Daniels now shaking up on the play. He looks out of it. The Celtics forward will miss at least a month to nurse a bruised spinal cord. During recovery, he was traded to the Kings, released, and then re-signed with the Celtics later that year, where he eventually returned to the court. So a bruised spinal cord is interesting because the spinal cord rests inside of the vertebrae that protect the spinal cord. But now the spinal cord shoots out nerves through the different segments of the vertebrae to give sensation, to give motor control. Now, if you have an awkward bending of the neck, and this happens quite frequently with auto accidents or in sports, it can can cause bruising of the spinal cord, which creates bleeding, swelling. And when there's bleeding and swelling, nerves don't function optimally. During that period of time, your body may not be able to move normally. You might have weakness, you might have tingling, awkward sensations. In fact, a lot of times when we have spinal cord injuries, to that extent or even worse, we don't know what the prognosis is gonna be until some time goes on and that swelling starts being reduced and we're able to start doing some rehab on patients. Because the initial period does not give us a clear picture of exactly what's gonna happen. The nervous system is tricky like that. Okay, that Lakers. Oh, what happened? Anthony Davis. Oh, looks like he got a pinky in the eye. I mean, orbital trauma is really dangerous. You can have all sorts of issues pop up here. Something as simple as a corneal abrasion to just a subconjunctival hemorrhage to true like orbital rupture. Davis was wheeled out on a wheelchair. Oh, wow. I believe he is headed to the locker room right now. Oh my God, on a wheelchair. It didn't look that bad. It didn't look good. He had a towel over his head as they were wheeling him away. Concussion, C concussion. I thought the NFL season was over.
You understand? Now, I understand that concussions can happen in other sports. Are they saying this was a concussion? I ain't seen nothing yesterday that made me say concussion. I, concussion? Now, I don't know. <laughs> How many times do we need a counter for every time he says concussion? Okay, let me be the adult go, go, in the room. Go ahead. Go ahead. Concussions, concussions are serious. I hope he's okay. I know they are. The thing is, concussions are serious, but the way that they occur is you, you get a substantial hit that causes your head to go back and forth, and that's not what we witnessed. There was concern that the Lakers star suffered a concussion, but ended up being cleared to play in the team's game six win over Golden State to close out the series. Yeah, I don't know if I would have called that a concussion. I mean, again, I'm not the team's doctor there and I didn't evaluate him, but just based on mechanism of injury, I'm a little bit suspicious. Keep your eyes on sportscaster Bob Rathbun. Oh, what happened? Play-by-play -play announcer for the Atlanta Hawks basketball team slumps in his chair, then starts convulsing oh. while his co-anchor keeps going, unaware of the emergency. Remember, different things cause seizures in different patients. The first thing that comes into my mind based on how that happened and based on the age of the patient, I would worry about an ischemic stroke happening where you're getting a blockage in the arteries that supply blood to the brain. When you don't get enough blood or circulation to the brain, you don't get enough oxygen to the brain, and that can start causing damage leading to symptoms of a seizure or what we know as FAST. Here's an acronym that we frequently discuss in the hospital. Rathman's rep sent Inside Edition a statement saying the 68-year-old announcer, quote, briefly lost consciousness on the court. Emergency medical professionals on site quickly treated Rathman for dehydration. What? <laughs> Come on. Dehydration leading to seizure-like movements? Look, could dehydration been a causative factor here? Sure. But if I was a doctor in the hospital and I just wrote as the diagnosis dehydration for a situation with that level of severity, I think that my seniors and colleagues would question me. I just put it that way. LeBron, nice cut and fake. And that's gonna be a oh. foul. And LeBron is that an ankle? James is holding his right lower foot area. You know what's weird about LeBron James shoes? I find them to be making them lower and lower without having good ankle support. And as someone who injures their ankles quite often, I wanna know what the science behind that is. Cause I know good heel lockdown can reduce ankle injuries, but man, when you roll your ankle and you have nothing up there to protect you, it's rough. The 19 time All-Star told reporters after first came back, he tore a tendon in his foot, the doctors recommended surgery, but he sought out another opinion from the LeBron James of feet who determined he could return after a period of rest. I know he said he tore and doctors recommended the surgery, but like, it's not very clear what he tore. It looks like a tweak, but I guess there could be a tear. Did the tear already exist and he made it worse? Hard to know. At 3.30 this morning, Michael Jordan woke up with flu-like symptoms. He had a stomach ache and a headache, and he couldn't go back to sleep. He threw up all night. And wow. As reported earlier, he missed the shoot around, but he was in bed all day and continued to throw up. If I was the, all the other players, I would stay away from Michael as much as possible so he doesn't spread the virus to me. I pump fake, freezes the defense, the jumper, net. He gets there and sits back. Oh. <laughs> they put the ice bag on his neck. He won't even take the gator. So sick and suffering from flu-like symptoms that at times he staggered, a dehydrated and exhausted Michael Jordan wills himself to 38 points against the Utah Jazz in a pivotal game five, adding to his legend as a clutch performer and relentless competitor. That, that was truly special. To be able to have muscular control and perform, not get injured, is nothing short of a miracle. When you're dehydrated, risk of injury skyrockets. Here are the top fitness mistakes my patients make. Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy and healthy. And huge thanks to Arab for sponsoring this video.